While it is no big deal setting up a tile set to work in Godot, it is confusing how to make your tiles interactive. That's why in this video I will teach you how you can make your own interactive tiles. Here we are in Godot and let's overview the project. We have a level scene, which will be our test polygon, an interactive tile map that has a tile set with two single tiles, rock under zero index and chest under index one. And also we have a chest scene which is just a static body 2D. By the way, all the art is provided by Analog Studios. Link to them in the description box. So our goal is to make this chest tile interactive. What's the problem with that? Godot does allow you to assign some script for a tile set. The problem is, this script works with the whole tile map as with one node. It does not work with each tile individually. And it makes customization of interaction with certain tiles cumbersome to implement. So here is what we will do. We will make our game replace the actual tiles of the tile map with their respective pre-made individual scenes. In other words, I will replace chest tiles with instances of the chest scene. And for visibility purposes, the chest scene has an open chest texture, just so you can see that it does replace the tile. Let's do that. Go to interactive tile map scene and create a script. Let's set it to no comments. And here. First, let's make its own class, interactive tile map. It is not required, but it simply makes it easier to add it to our scenes. And now let's set up some variables. The most important here is the tile scenes dictionary. And in this dictionary, a key value pair symbolizes the index of the tile being replaced and the scene which should replace this tile. And an onReady variable half cell size, which will be used for properly positioning the instances of these scenes. Now let's get to the methods. Let's simply throw them in and work with them as we go. So we will need two more functions. First is replace tile with object and the second replace tiles with scenes. Let's start from the bottom with the method replace tile with object. It will be the most important method here. It receives three parameters. A tile position within the tile map, a scene which you instantiate an object from and the parent of this object which by default is the node tree. So the first step will be to clear this cell in the tile map and update bitmask region so the tile map will still properly show itself. And the next step will be to spawn the object. We check if the object scene is not null, we instantiate it and we calculate an object position and then we simply added to our node tree. And that's it. And the next method, replace tiles with scenes, it will receive scene dictionary, alike tile scenes, and by default it equals to it, and it will go through every place tile in the tile map, it will get its ID, and it will check if our scene dictionary has such an ID, meaning that this tile has a corresponding scene to it and can be replaced. And in this case, we access the object scene using this tile ID, and we call our replace tile with object method. And in the ready function, what we will do is simply call this replace tiles with scenes method. But first we have to yield one idle frame to avoid crashing our tile map on startup. It should be working now. Let's recall how it all works. Our tile map goes through every tile we have placed, checks if its ID is in the tile scenes dictionary, and if it is, it replaces this tile with a corresponding scene. So in our case, it should replace the chest. It doesn't matter if the sprite is the same or not. Everything that is important is this tile index. And now, as I said, we want our chest to be replaced with chest scenes. So let's go to tile set and check which ID has our chest tile. And as you can see, it's under ID of 1. And that's exactly what we have in our tile scenes dictionary. So let's launch it. I expect these chests will be replaced while these rocks will remain tiles. And as you can see, it did work. From the remote tab you can see that the chest tiles were replaced by chest instances, but the rocks didn't. They remained the same. So it's all good and stuff, but let's cover how to make this dictionary 
more customizable. Of course you can manually change this dictionary via code editor, but it's not the best way to do that and that's why I made it an export variable. So here, let's go to our level and let's delete this first item of the tile map. And we will create a new key value pair here. So our key is an integer and let's set it as zero. If you can remember, the rock tile has the zero index. For the value, we have to set it to an object and let's drag our chest scene here. So all the rocks will be replaced with open chests, while these Closed chest tiles will remain closed chest tiles. Let's test it. And it didn't work. Because I forgot to press add key value pair. That's very important. I constantly forget this. But it is very important that you do so. And once again let's test it. Voila, it works. Since we have added this as a valid pair. Now you know how to create your own interactive tile map. As you could see, this is not an implementation of an interactive tile, but rather a workaround for allowing particular tiles to have complex interaction. It is very useful when a single tile must have a complex logic. Take a chest for example. It must be solid, unlockable and containing something. You might also want to add some animation for that. That's already 4 points here. To put it simply, tile map is not designed for placing objects with such complex interaction. If you want to make something like that, you have to either create a tile map completely dedicated to one thing you wanted to do, or to use the workaround like the one I presented in this video. But that's it for now. Thank you for watching, I hope this video was helpful and if it was, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It was Ives and until next time.